Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Fantasy Fellow Show. I'm your host, The Fellow KGB. You can follow me on Twitter at The Fellow KGB. And tonight, it's August 5th. It's a Wednesday evening. I don't know what time it is. It's maybe 7 o'clock. And I'm just going to be reviewing a best ball draft that I completed maybe an hour ago. It was probably one of my favorite best ball uh, draft results that I've had. So I'm super excited to go over it with you guys. <clears throat> but if you're new to best ball, uh, you can sign up on drafters.com. I have a promo code in the link below where you're going to get 50% of your deposit match. So go ahead and check that out if you want to try drafters.com. But currently right now, they're running a drafters best ball championship where for $5.50, you can get into this massive lobby of uh it's it's 12 team drafts uh but they're they're taking 10,008 total entries and they're about halfway filled up right now and they're going to you know siphon off uh teams down the playoff stretch and they'll figure out who the best team is and then you get a chance i think it's at $10,000 they have $50,000 total in prizes uh but go ahead and check that out and um i guess we're going to click on my teams and I'll open up the draft lobby here um get this one no just a second, let's find which one I just completed. And it was this one. Um, so I had the sixth overall pick, and uh, I don't think I've had the sixth overall pick in a best ball draft, and it turned out really well. I was super excited uh, <clears throat> with how the draft go. I didn't go with the running back. I started with Michael Thomas, uh, but let's, let's filter here to the, the draft table, and I will kind of make this. So that's the full 20 rounds there. We're gonna just kind of zoom in here. And we'll just review the draft and kind of go through it. So I'm here at the sixth pick. We see the first five running backs go off the board. Uh, I could have taken Derrick Henry there, but at that point, I, it's the sixth best running back versus the number one wide receiver. I think Michael Thomas uh, has a really good opportunity to score more points there. So I want Michael Thomas. I don't need to sell you on Michael Thomas. I just uploaded my wide receiver rankings uh, video this morning if you want to check that out. Uh, I'll probably link that at the end of this video. Uh, but anyways, we start with Michael Thomas. It comes around here, Tyree Kill, Devontae Adams, a little run on receivers there. Uh, Derrick Henry, Joe Mixon. We see Travis Kelsey go in the first round. That's probably the highest I've seen him go in a typical PPR league. And then you got Kenyon Drake, Clyde Edwards-Alaire at 13th. That, look, that looks really solid to get Clyde Edwards as your RB2. I like that move. Uh, Julio Jones, DeAndre Hopkins, Lamar Jackson, Chris Godwin, and Pat Mahomes. These are three guys that I like getting on my teams. Uh, and then I'm up again here, and there's a ton of running backs to go with. And I just took the guy that was highest on my rankings list, which was Nick Chubb. And uh, I have no problem taking Nick Chubb, especially at this point in the 19th best player overall. I think he's got a really good chance to lead the league in rushing. And he did end up uh, in my, my rankings. He did end up being my number one uh, rushing yard leader. Uh, let me open up my projections document here. So we're off to a good start. We got Michael Thomas, and we have a top five upside back with Nick Chubb. It really depends on how many touchdowns he's going to score. Uh, but I was pretty happy to get uh, my seventh best running back along with the number one overall wide receiver here. So if I filter by flex on my rankings here, we're going to see one second while it loads. Uh, I ended up getting Nick Chubb here at my 10th overall best player. And then Michael Thomas is up here as my fourth best player. And this is filtered by PPR League. So we got two of my top 10 guys. Uh, super stoked about that. That's good value there. Uh, I could have taken any of these guys, but I just went with my board. Uh, Miles Sanders, Austin Eckler, Aaron Jones, Josh Jacobs. Uh, George Kittle finishes out round two. And then you've got wide receiver rounds three, man. That's probably the best spot to get it. And I love all five of these guys at value. You see DJ Moore, Kenny Galladay, Mike Evans, O.L. Beckham, Juju Smith-Schuster. Those are five fantastic wideouts. Uh, one of the wideouts that I think should be up there is Adam Thielen and maybe Allen Robinson and these guys. Uh, but because we got Michael Thomas early, I wanted to just land a running, another running back. So I went with Melvin Gordon here. He's going to be the goal line back for the Broncos. He's going to be the pass catching block as well. And uh, he's got a really good path to, to double digit touchdowns with that team. So I went with Melvin Gordon there. Uh, to pair with Nick Chubb. And then you see Leonard Fournette, Todd Gurley, Amari Cooper, Jonathan Taylor, Allen Robinson, and Zach Ertz. Uh, Zach Ertz is starting to trickle back up. I've seen him, uh, sometimes he used to drift in the fifth round back in here, but now he's kind of, people had a little bounce back in his valley. So he's creeping up the boards a little bit. He's an, easily the number one target and basically the number one receiver in Philadelphia. So I like Ertz here. Uh, Adam Thielen, that's a great haul. I really like what Team 12 is doing with his draft right now. He got the two running backs. And I have both those guys as RB2s with RB1 upside. So he paired both of them. That's great. He gets top five tight end. He gets Adam Thielen, who I have. I have Adam Thielen ranked pretty high. 
uh, where did Adam Thielen come down? He's my 23rd best overall player, but he's like wide receiver seven or eight maybe. So uh, I really like that value there for this 12 team. And then uh, fourth round here, we're moving with Mark Andrews, Calvin Ridley, A.J. Brown, Cooper Cup, David Johnson. And then I saw the opportunity where I know I – I mean, I like James Conner. I like Le'Veon Bell, and I like Chris Carson. But I think James Conner's got the highest upside if he stays healthy, you know, for more than 12, 14 games. I think he's going to have the best offense to mess with uh, for best ball league. So I went with James Conner. And now we got Nick Chubb, Melvin Gordon, and James Conner, two of those guys – uh, with this best ball format, you're going to score two of your best running backs, and then you get a flex. So there's a chance that three of these guys might be scoring for us every week. So three running backs and Michael Thomas to start and feeling really good. These guys all have top 12 potential. And James Conner is kind of the wild card because if he if he goes off, we're looking like a really good team here. And I think Melvin, Melvin Gordon's got like a basically like a 50-50 chance of scoring a touchdown every week. So I like his odds there. And uh, just feeling really good about this start. We got three potential RB1s and Michael Thomas. So uh, after that, you see DJ Chark, Le'Veon Bell, Robert Woods, Tyler Lockett, Chris Carson. I'm fans of all these picks, too. <clears throat> the third and fourth round are so fun because uh, there's, there's so many good players still. So uh, the fifth round, Terry McLaurin, Cortland Sutton, DK Metcalf, Devontae Parker, Marquise Brown. Huge wide receiver run here. You see eight out of ten picks go to wide receiver. Uh, so this kind of goes, if you've been watching my videos, this kind of goes with what I'm saying. Rounds three, four, five, and six basically are stretching into seventh and eighth. There's a lot of receivers that are still on the board. So I think you can wait and try to get some of these guys uh, as you take running backs early. So that's kind of what I did. But I prioritized running back in the third and fourth round, and we're going to shift to receiver here at the end. But I did go with Michael Gallup here. He was my highest rated receiver on my board, so I just kept collecting best players on my board. Um, he's my wide receiver too. And I really like, if, if you've listened to some of my stuff, I've, I've been talking about Michael Gallup and that Dallas offense for a while. I have him down here as my 38th best flex player and we get him at the 50, 54th overall. So that's value for me. Uh, Devin Singletary, Mark Ingram, DeAndre Swift, uh, not really into any of those running backs round five. Give me, give me some of these receivers or I'd even take a quarterback. I think before some of these running backs, uh, Swift is interesting, but more from a dynasty uh, perspective. So uh, Kyler Murray, Keenan Allen, Stephon Diggs finish out round five. And then you got T.Y. Hilton, Darren Waller, David Montgomery, Rob Gronkowski crashing the sixth round. This is probably the earliest I've seen Rob Gronkowski go. Uh, Dak Prescott, Jared Cook. And then I'm up to pick here. And I'm like, I could take, I really wanted to take Tyler Boyd here in the sixth round, but I kind of wanted to see if I could snag him in the seventh. Because uh, I didn't think I was going to get Ronald Jones here. You see one, two, three, four, five other running backs go. And uh, Ronald Jones was just like my highest running back on my board. Uh, Bruce Arians just came out today and said that Ronald Jones is our main guy. And, uh, I mean, I got Ronald Jones up here as my RB20. I think he's an RB2 with upside most weeks. He could be a double-digit touchdown guy uh, with that Tom Brady offense in Tampa Bay. So I'm all in on Ronald Jones. Round six is probably the highest price I've had to pay for him. Maybe a week ago, a month ago, I was getting him in the eighth, ninth, seventh round. Um, so his value's on the rise. And uh, maybe we might have to be start taking him in the fifth round if things you know, keep rolling in the camp and we keep hearing positive, positive buzz for Ronald Jones. So I love Jones in the sixth. Uh, and now we got four really good running backs. I think these guys, I mean, Nick Chubb's probably going to be an RB, a top five, top 10 running back for sure. But Melvin Gordon and James Conner both have top 12 upside. And I think Ronald Jones is top 15, 16 upside in the best of his spectrums and maybe higher. It depends on the touchdowns. But uh, so we're pretty much set at running back. I feel really good there. Uh, Will Fuller, Raheem Mostert, Cam Akers, Russell Wilson, Kareem Hunt, J.K. Dobbins. I would have liked, I mean, I could have I used Raheem, Cam Akers, Kareem Hunt, J.K. Dobbins. I could have used all those guys, but I just think that Tampa Bay offense, man, it's going to be hard to, to not want to get pieces of that offense. Uh, so Jones was the cheapest investment. Uh, at that time, you know, Godwin, Evans, Gronkowski, those are the main pieces, but I think Ronald Jones is the best value uh, at this point. Sometimes Rob Gronkowski actually falls a little bit, so he kind of becomes the value later on. Uh, but he went in the sixth round in this draft, so whatever. Uh, but anyways, we're moving on here in the seventh round. We got Marlon Mack, Deshaun Watson, Marvin Jones, Jarvis Landry, and uh, my gamble paid off. I was able to snag Tyler Boyd, so that was really, that was really awesome. Uh, drink of water for Tyler Boyd. So now we got Michael Thomas, Michael Gallup, and Tyler Boyd. If we look at my wide receiver rankings real quick, I mean, obviously Thomas is my number one. <clears throat> but I got Gallup down here as my 20, and Tyler Boyd is my 23. So I have three top 24 uh, wide receivers already. And then if we look at the running backs that I took, I got Chubb here at seven. 
Connor and Gordon 15, 16, and then I got Ronald Jones here at the 20. So I have four, you know, RB, I have four top 20 running backs and I have three top 24 receivers. So I'm feeling really good. That's probably my favorite uh, seven rounds of a draft to start. So I'm, I'm, this is a really good chance at winning the 10K. So everything's going smooth. Uh, AJ Green, Tyler Higby, Julian Edelman, Christian Kirk, Josh Allen, Brandon Cooks. He's been a guy that I've been kind of keeping in my, my eye on in the seventh and eighth round. Uh, Debo Samuel, guys, don't be drafting Debo Samuel right now uh, as, as early as this is. Maybe if he falls to the double-digit rounds, but he's got that foot injury. He's likely on the pup list. I know he's a good player, but, uh, I mean, you could be taking some of these other guys with upside uh, in this spot instead. So Tom Brady, Hayden Hurst, Jerry Judy, C.D. Lamb. So we get some rookies coming off the board. Uh, I was queuing up Miko Hardman because I just want pieces of that Chiefs offense, but we missed on Miko. Um, so I went with Deontay Johnson. He was my next best player with upside. And if we look at my receiver rankings real quick, I got Deontay as my wide receiver 37. So he's on, he's on the fringe of being really useful for us in fantasy. <clears throat> and I think in a best ball league, uh, because he's our number four, he's going to be competing with, <clears throat> with my running backs for that flex spot. So uh, I think Nick Chubb's going to be the primary RB1. <clears throat> and then Gordon and Connor are probably going to be trading off weeks as my RB2. Uh, but between Ronald Jones and Deontay Johnson and one of the two, Gordon or Connor, uh, I got pretty good competition for that starting flex spot. So I love that. And uh, I just want to – I haven't really had a chance to talk about Deontay Johnson lately. So I just want to pull up his numbers uh, <clears throat> from last year. He's one of my favorite year two receivers. Uh, I might do a video where I look at just, you know, second-year players that might take another step forward. Uh, but his rookie season, he played through a hernia, I think it was. He had hernia surgery in the offseason, but he's cleared good to go, so no worries about that. But he finished with 59 receptions that led the Steelers last year, uh, 60, 680 yards, five touchdowns that also led the Steelers last year, on 92 targets. And when you consider that he's playing without – Juju and without Ben Roethlisberger, uh, that's a pretty good floor. So about 10 fantasy points per game in PPR leagues. And you see, I mean, for a best ball league where he's probably going to score for us, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven out of 16 weeks that he would have scored. as his, And that's going to be his floor. He's probably going to have eight to 10 double-digit games this, this year. Uh, hopefully get some, you know, 100-yard receiving games and uh, build on this awesome rookie season. So I love Deontay Johnson. He's our wide receiver four. He's going to crack our lineup from time to time. Uh, you see Evan Ingram. I'm interested in Jalen Reger. That buzz is growing there. Hunter Henry, Tariq Cohen. I was really hoping to get Tariq Cohen, but because if you've watched my stuff, you know I'm all in on Tariq Cohen, but we're pretty, you know, stacked at running back. So I decided to to try to get some different names here. And that's what I'm doing with these best balls. I kind of view it as an investment portfolio and I'm just trying to get different pieces uh, to invest in. So uh, Tariq Cohen, Matt Ryan, Darius Slayton, TJ Hawkinson, John Brown, Carson Wentz, Darius Geis. And I know <sighs> Drew Brees turns a lot of people off with his comments this summer and it doesn't really sit well with me either. I'm not a fan of Drew Brees, but because I have Michael Thomas and it's a best ball league, I figured what the hell, Let's just pair him with, with Michael Thomas and see what happens. If you look at Drew Brees' numbers from last season, they're pretty gnarly. Uh, he was hurt for whatever four games uh, with a thumb injury. But when he came back, man, he was on a points-per-game basis, if you filter here, he was QB5. So we're getting a guy that has top five upside every week. Um, and you look at some of these numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games above – 20 points, eight games above 20 points out of his 11 starts. So I, I'm liking those odds. That feels really good to me. He put up a 40 burger here against the 49ers. Uh, so Drew Brees has as high as a ceiling every week that, as pretty much anybody. You know, he's on the Mahomes level where he could go off for three or four touchdowns every week. Uh, so I feel good for Brees there around nine. Uh, Jared Goff, Jordan Howard, Carrion Johnson, Philip Lindsay, James White. These are all just, you know, bench running backs where I don't really need to look at running backs yet. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, Keyshawn Bond, Sony Michelle. He's on the pup list, so keep an eye on Sony Michelle. The guy that we have to watch for is Damian Harris, the second-year running back out of Alabama. Uh, he actually went down here in the 16th round, and I was going to take him. Uh, I was thinking about him down here, but uh, definitely a name to keep an eye on as tra training camps ramp up. Uh, Matt Stafford, Austin Hooper, Matt Breida, Emmanuel Sanders, and uh, – there's a little bit of news out of the Dolphins camp today. Alan Hearns and Albert Wilson have both opted out of the 2020 season. So that leaves uh, Devontae Parker and Preston Williams as the top two targets. 
And I mean, Hearns and Albert Wilson, you know, were the third and fourth receivers. Uh, so I, I didn't really think there's going to be a big bump up for Williams and Parker. And I thought most of that, most of the upside is probably going to go to Mike Jasicki's way. Uh, so I don't have any shares of him yet. So I decided to get a tight end here that I haven't drafted yet. So I feel pretty good about him in a best ball league. Uh, he's got, you know, he's got some massive touchdown upside. He can get up to six, seven, eight touchdowns, maybe even more uh, with that offense. So I love getting a share just sticky here in the 10th round. And uh, to hedge it, I go with Dallas Goddard here around later. But guys in between these picks are Zach Moss. I love Moss. Anthony Miller is a fun receiver. Tevin Coleman's a good uh, back to stash. Mike Williams, a good best ball receiver. Daniel Jones, Deshaun Jackson, Baker Mayfield. Preston Williams is another one of those Dolphins picks that's going to see value boosted his way soon. Uh, Noah Fant, Tony Pollard, and then again, I go with Dallas Goddard. Uh, my thing with Dallas Goddard is even with a healthy Zach Ertz, this guy has value. And in the year of 2020, with all this COVID stuff going on, if anything happens to Ertz, man, or if he gets injured or anything, we're probably going to be ranking Dallas Goddard as a top five tight end. Uh, so not only does he have weekly value with Ertz healthy, but this man's a lottery ticket. Uh, if anything happens to, to Zach Ertz. Let's take a quick look at uh, what happened last year with these guys. Because I think Ertz missed maybe week 15 or 16. Let's double check. Ertz missed the one game, and it was, I guess it was week 17 last year. So if we look at what Dallas Goddard did in it, week 17, he catches uh, four for 65. Uh, but I think the week before, nine for 91 in the touchdown, he ended the season really strong in the PPR league. Um, so if you look basically from week seven on, this guy was a tight end one uh, the rest of the way. He even played really well against Seattle in the playoffs, seven for 73, uh, but just a lot of double digit games here. So as my tight end too, I feel really, really good about having Goddard there. And if anything happens to Ertz, you got a potential lottery ticket on your hand. So I love Goddard uh, in the 11th round, Alexander Madison, Johnny Smith, I was thinking about him, J-Mo Crowder, Henry Ruggs, Sterling Shepard. I was really looking at Sterling Shepard. And I think a lot of people are, are valuing the Giants wide receivers wrong. I see Darius Slayton going up here in the ninth round, uh, but I'd rather have Sterling Shepard or Golden Tate two rounds later. So I was really hoping for Shepard to fall around here, but you got Latavius Murray, Cam Newton, Robbie Anderson, uh, my boy Blake Jarwin, who I would have probably taken here if he was there, Daryl Henderson, Ben Roethlisberger, Sammy Watkins was intriguing, but uh, I went with the best Giants receiver available. I think they're going to not be a very good team again this year. And uh, let's just take a quick look at what our boy Golden Tate did last year. If you remember, he was, uh, he was suspended the first four weeks of the year last year, but he still finished as wide receiver 44, which is pretty impressive. Uh, in a PPR league, he didn't start off game. That first game was a little rough, but uh, only two games out of his 11 games were below double digits and everything else. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six touchdowns in 11 games. It seems like Daniel Jones likes throwing to this guy. So I just like the consistency. And as one of my fifth, sixth receivers, one, two, three, four, my fifth receiver, if he can chip in 10 plus double digit games, I'm feeling really good about that. So I love Golden Tate here. And then I guess let me take a minute to look at Sterling Shepard real quick. Because I think people are starting, uh, Darius Slayton's kind of overvalued in my opinion. He's probably going to be on one of my video lists uh, when I go do that. But Sterling Shepard last year in – 10 games, he averaged 14.0 fantasy points per game. It was his best career, you know, fantasy points per game season. And in a best ball league especially, he's putting up some big numbers here. And his worst game was 7.6. So I know even in a redraft league, I think you can whip him out there every week. And you just look at the target consistency here. A lot of nines, tens, elevens. Uh, when he was healthy and playing, he was, he was probably their number one receiver. And then I guess so if you look here, weeks one, three, four, five, uh, so Slayton, <clears throat> I guess uh, Shepard kind of missed week six through 11. Let's take a look at what Darius Slayton did during these times. Week six through 11. So starting here and basically here. So even, I guess, when, when Shepard did come back, I guess Shepard was out when he had his, ma his monster game here against the Jets. Uh, but there's just not as high as this. I mean, he had one, two really good games. Looks like another couple of good games here. Uh, but I just think with a healthy Golden Tate, a Sterling Shepard that's really healthy, I think Daniel Jones is going to focus more targets to those guys. And Slayton's going to be a little bit more boom bust every week. He's kind of got like a Robbie Anderson vibe to me, um, where it's hard to trust him in your redraft line. I'm, he's fine for best ball, but uh, I mean, you could wait two rounds later and get a guy like Golden Tate or Sterling Shepard. So uh, that's enough on the Giants receivers, though. 
So we got Golden Tate, Ian Thomas, Justin Jefferson, Joe Burrow, Rashad Perriman's an interesting guy, Jack Doyle, Nikhil Harry, Naheem Hines, Boston Scott's one of my favorite backup running backs, Chase Edmonds and Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, and I'm up to pick here, and I go with Hunter Renfro. Uh, we went uh, running back early. We got our quarterback out of the way. We got a couple good tight ends here. So I just stacked some receivers here that I like. And both of these guys are slot receivers, and I think they have a good chance at leading their team in receptions. So let's just take a quick look at – I mean, if you've been watching my stuff, uh, I love you, and you've probably uh, realized that I've been talking about Hunter Renfro quite a bit lately. Uh, let's just pull up his numbers where did he finish? He was wide receiver 54 last year, his rookie season. He averaged 10.3 fantasy points per game, uh, 49 catches, 605 yards, and four touchdowns in just 13 games. Uh, but the thing was, it took him a little while to get rolling, basically the first half of the year, not much. Uh, but something clicked week eight, and from then on, he was, he was locked in. So he had four of his touchdowns in the last uh, seven weeks here. He finished the season with back-to-back 100-yard games and touchdowns. And both target, you know, nine times with the targets there. So uh, two 20-point games, a uh, couple bangers here. So I just think he's, he's, his role is not going to be threatened uh, with the guys that they drafted. Uh, so I don't really see much of his outlook changing. I think he's going to be the, the primary slot receiver, and he's going to rack up maybe four or five catches a game. Uh, so I, I'm a big fan of the Raiders offense, but I think people are kind of sleeping on it, and people are kind of turning their nose up to Derek Carr. Uh, but he hasn't had Jack crap to work with the last few years so I'm, I'm a big fan of the Raiders and what they can do uh, so he's my wide receiver six so we got Duke Johnson, Devonta Freeman, Alshon Jeffrey, Michael Pittman, Ryan Tannehill uh, I'm not going to probably just keep reading all these names I'll kind of just start reviewing the guys that I picked here and I went with Gardner Minshew here as my QB2 I think Drew Brees is probably going to be starting you know 10, 11, 12 of my weeks most weeks he's probably going to have you know some down games every now and then uh, but if you look at what our guy Gardner Minshew did last year, this defense is going to be garbage. So they're going to be throwing the ball a lot. He averaged 16 fantasy points per game last year. Uh, and we see one, two, three. We see three games over 20 points, but he's got these 18s, these 19s. Uh, so that's what I'm interested in is if Drew Brees can't get it done, uh, maybe Minshew can you know, whip in a 20-point game or an 18-point game to keep us competitive. Um, and again, they're not going to, it's his second year. He looks really good. He's, he's been handed the starting spot. So he's coming in knowing that he's the guy. Uh, I think he's going to be comfortable. The team's going to be bad and they got nothing to lose, you know, except the games, of course, but like, he's just going to be winging it and seeing what he can do. Uh, and then I came around here, uh, with one of my favorite picks lately is Brandon Ayuk. I mentioned, don't be drafting Debo Samuel in the eighth round. Because uh, he's probably going to be on the pup list, which means out for the first six weeks. Maybe he's out a month and they activate him, um, you know, before the season starts. But Brandon Ayuk, you know, 25th overall first round pick, uh, he's stepping into the, the the wide receiver one spot. So they're going to try to get him the ball. I really don't like trusting rookie receivers, especially. But he's got no competition there. Uh, maybe second year Jalen Hurd. Maybe uh, what's his name? Uh, the, the the receiver there. I can't think of his name. Um, it's escaping me. Kendrick Bourne, that's who I was thinking of. He's the veteran presence there, but uh, not a lot of competition there besides George Kittle. Maybe Brandon Ayuk scores for us six, seven times uh, getting over double digits. So I like Ayuk's upside there. Uh, Derek Carr, I mentioned I'm into the Raiders offense, and if, if Hunter Renfro goes off for 100 yards and a touchdown or two, we got, you know, that's a fat stack right there. Uh, Randall Cobb, he's one of my favorite receivers deep in the draft here. Um, he's Houston's number three slot receiver. So I think he's going to be just fine. He's probably going to end up scoring six to eight times for us, maybe getting in the double digits that many times. Uh, the last running back that I took here in the 18th round was Josh Kelly. I think he's going to be the goal line back. Uh, they do have Eckler and Justin Jackson there, but Josh Kelly's a big frame. He kind of reminds me of Jordan Howard, uh, Jordan Howard, the way he plays. So I think he could, you know, maybe punch in four or five touchdowns this year. We'll see if that happens. Um, Round 19, I got my first share of Brian Edwards. Uh, there was a Derek Carr quote that came out today, uh, and Carr said he remi uh, Edwards reminds him of Devontae Adams because they played at Fresno State together. Uh, so if anyone's being compared to Devontae Adams, I know it's Derek Carr, but uh, if he's saying this, it might be something to look into a little bit. So in the 19th round, I mean, look at some of the other names that I got going on here, you know. I like Kendrick Bourne, but essentially if Edwards can score for us two or three times uh, as our 19th pick, we're doing fine. So there's a potential for him to catch four or five touchdowns this year and maybe make our lineup 
Uh, and then just to pad my tight end room, I went with Tyler Eifert, uh, Jacksonville. So I'm kind of just taking uh, a stab at the number one tight end for Gardner Minshew. Uh, I did notice something when I was doing my projection numbers for Jacksonville. Uh, they did not have a healthy tight end last year. You see right here in 2019, they went through seven tight ends. Nobody, their, their leading tight end had 14 catches <clears throat> on the season. Uh, but if we look at this group as a whole, they ended up catching 53 balls. They ended up <clears throat> being targeted 78 times, and they had about 450 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, so if if Tyler Eifert, he stayed. Tyler Eifert also stayed healthy for a full 16 games, you know, last year. By the way, so I think that's a pretty good step. Uh, he's been always labeled as an injury prone guy, but he's got no competition. You know, it's his first career 16 game season. Uh, so essentially, this is what. Tyler Eifert could be walking into, you know, it's not nothing much, but if he hits 45, 50 catches, if he gets 500 some yards and maybe three, four touchdowns, there's a chance that he could start for us a few times uh, during the season. So I just took a chance and stacked uh, Eifert as my third tight end. Uh, but yeah, I felt really good about this draft. If we look at the team real quick at the top. Uh, so we're starting two running backs. Two of these guys need to score for us every week between Nick Chubb, Melvin Gordon, James Conner, Ronald Jones. And then we got a rookie, Joshua Kelly chipping in there. So I'm really confident that two of those guys are going to, you know, go hard uh, on a weekly basis. And maybe the third one, you know, gets in as our flex. And then as receiver positions, you start three receivers. So we got Michael Thomas, Michael Gallup, Tyler Boyd. Uh, if those guys can't get it done, maybe Deontay Johnson, Golden Tate, Hunter Renfro, Brandon Ayuk, Randall Cobb, Brian Edwards. Someone's going to get, you know, double digits there. So we ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine receivers, and I love all of them. Um, <clears throat> I might have to go back and update some of my rankings, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to lower Debo Samuel now that we know he's probably on the pup list. Uh, so Brandon Ayuk might crash my top 50, top 60 receivers as a wide receiver, four or five. Uh, and then I think I might have to adjust my Randall Cobb and Brian Edwards rankings a little bit because I see those guys uh, being you know, used a little bit more than people are thinking. So I'm really happy with those nine receivers. Uh, between our tight ends, Jasicki, Goddard, and Eifert, someone got a really good chance at scoring a touchdown or you know, catching six for 80 that week. Uh, and then our quarterbacks, Drew Brees, Gardner, Minshew, Derek Carr. Uh, I think we got a really good chance here at the 10K first overall prize. Uh, we'll see if our running backs can you know, stay healthy and hammer it out, but uh, that's going to do it. This was the sixth overall pick. If you wanted to uh, try your own best ball league, I know DraftKings – I might do a video. I think it's only on the app right now, but DraftKings is doing best ball leagues all of a sudden. Uh, and I think they're as low as like three bucks. So I might do a video on that. I just got to figure out how to do it on my phone and put it in a video format for you guys. But again, if you're interested in doing best ball, uh, go ahead and go to, <clears throat> I guess there's a description in the description below. You can find my link for my promo code, uh, copy and paste that, or just open the link. And uh, say you put 20 bucks in, you're going to get 10 bucks back. So it's 50% of what you put in. And uh, I mean, you can do, <clears throat> if we look here, you can do leagues uh, for as cheap as a dollar and 10 cents. And it's all leagues to NFL, MLB, NBA, uh, a lot of stuff to look at here. So check out drafters.com. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to leave me a comment. Let me know what my best pick was. Let me know what my worst pick was. Are you liking any of the guys that I'm liking? That'd be great to know. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, thank you again. We'll see you in another video. Peace.